Hi guys, it's this is Ailstock. During today's whole group lesson, a handful of you guys had some awesome questions in regards to your grades and um, how you can make them up and making sure that you are on track. So this video is going to go through OMHS and IXL so you guys can understand um, how to see what you have completed and what you still need to do, okay? So the first step is to make sure that you are logged into OMHS, all right? So once you guys log in, your screen will look something as such. You will click on classes and then you need to go to your pre-algebra class so that way you can see everything specific to this class. Once you do so, it brings you to your home page. And even though on the home page there is a nice little snapshot here of your grade, your progress, and things overdue, that's exactly what it is, is a snapshot. So in order for you guys to get a bigger picture, you're going to need to actually dive in. So the first thing we're going to go to is how to actually find the IXL assignments, okay? So the IXL assignments are listed on the weekly newsletter. But even though they're on the newsletter, that's not a clickable link. So to find the spot in the content where you can actually check off that you do them and you can click on a direct link to take you straight to IXL, you will go to the content tab. This is where all of your coursework is, but since we're talking about IXL specifically, you then need to go to the module that says IXL. Now there will be one of these for every unit. So since we just started unit two this week, there's an IXL module for unit one, number properties, but then there's also an IXL module within unit two equations, okay? When you click on that for the IXL assignments, it has the rubric, so how it's graded, as well as a little poster explaining what the SMART score is. Then there is a listing of all of those IXL assignments with their due dates. So these first three that you see pictured here, these are the original three IXLs. So for these, I have not only graded them, I have also put in missing zeros if you guys haven't done them yet. Now the two that were on scientific notation that were due last week, or last week's assignments that were due yesterday on Tuesday, I will be going and putting all of those missing zeros in tomorrow, okay? But even if you guys haven't done them, you still have a chance to make them up. I'm just kind of letting you know the timing on how I grade things. So after you see the assignment, if it doesn't pop up automatically with the description, click on it so that way you can read exactly what it is. And then your screen will look like such. So you will see the name of the assignment, it has the due date, so this one, since it was one of the original three, was technically due this past week. And in here I have a nice little blurb. So if the newsletter wasn't formatted in such a way that you understood, or maybe you read the newsletter and you've forgotten, I have a nice little reminder on here saying, hold on, before you do this IXL assignment, make sure you've completed this lessons. And the reason I, I have this on here is it'll make the IXL assignment easier if you guys have completed the lesson first, because the OMHS, in this case, 1.02 and 1.03 is the lesson, and then the IXL is the practice, so what's actually graded. And then all you have to do is this is a hyperlink, so you can just click on it and it'll take you straight to that IXL assignment. Now, I do have a little backup. If it ever doesn't work, if you keep reading, you can see that it says if you search this three-letter code on IXL, it will take you right to that assignment. Another thing that you need to make sure you do is check it off when you are done. So just like your OMHS assignments, there's a checkbox there. So it's basically a little... It's a way to, for you to keep organized, to know what you've done and haven't done. So I will go in and grade it, but after you guys get it done and you get a SMART score of a 70 and above, because that would give you a grade of a B or higher, then check it off so that way you know it's done and it just maybe is awaiting grading. All right, now for those of you that 
are not sure how to review things, or maybe after you've done it, you want to see your feedback. So I'm back on the home page. Now, even though it shows you your overall grade here, that's just the letter grade. We need more information than that. So you always have to make sure you view that grades tab. And you should be checking your grades for every class um, one to three times a week to make sure that you're not missing anything. Because in this grades tab, that's where we can see the details. So when you click on it, you'll get a screen that looks something like this. It'll have your overall grade, but then it has the detailed grade. So if we look at this example here, on this very first IXL assignment, the student got a five out of five, so that's an A. And you can even see in the comments I left that they had done it originally and gotten a 48, but then they took my advice, they did the OMHS lessons, they came to that live session, watched the video, and then look, they got an 82. So I went in and updated their grade, so that was awesome. And then the second one, they got a six out of five. So they got that bonus point. So they got a 90 or above SMART score, which gives them that one point extra credit. And then this last one here, this is an example of the feedback I give you if you didn't do so well. So right here on the grades tab, you can see how many points you got, you can see your SMART score, and then I've left you a nice little note that says, hey, this is the OMHS lesson that you should review, or this is the date that you should go back to and watch that recording of. And then I do have a comment for once you guys do that to email me because after the due date has passed, I will definitely go back and update your scores. But I'm not going to be like once we're into unit two, I'm not going to be checking unit one every week. So if you guys go back and improve things, make sure you just send me a quick email so I can go back, look at your score and update it. All right, and then lastly, here is what it will look like if you are missing something. So unfortunately, this gradebook does not allow me to put in an M for missing. And once I put in a grade, it disappears from the overdue tab. So that's why the grades section is so critical. So this person has, so I had to put in zero points, but then see how I made the comment, this assignment is missing, please make it up. So you guys can still go back and make up those assignments. Because I know um, with this being new for a lot of us, we're kind of getting used to things. So hopefully today during class, I cleared some of that up. But if not, that's why I wanted to make this little video. All right, let's finish things off by just briefly going over IXL. So once you get into IXL, a couple things is you have to make sure you're on the Florida Online School website. So when you go to sign in, it should look something like this. Because if you go to the generic IXL site, it will not work. Or it will, but it'll only let you do five or six questions and then it'll kick you out. So right down here in the black and white text box is the specific website. I highly encourage you guys to bookmark it because IXL is used in every single one of your classes. And so that means you'll probably be working on IXL every single day. For most of you, your username is your first initial and then your last name. Now, when you do that, please make sure that when you go to sign in, it actually has your name in the corner. Because if some of you have similar names to other people, we've maybe had to add a number to your username. And so you don't wanna accidentally log in as somebody else. So always make sure it's your name. Or maybe you have a sibling that lives at home. You don't wanna be doing your work on your sibling's account. So always verify that you have you signed in, okay? And then, um, yeah, I think that's it. So just make sure you're all signed in. All right, along with those weekly assignments that you're gonna have specific to the content that I grade you, you also need to work in the diagnostic area. And this is what we did today in our small group section. So every week, you need to spend 15 to 20 minutes working on the math diagnostic, okay? One of the reasons for this is 
It's a diagnostic. It's diagnosing what you've learned. And so by working on it every single week, you are updating things because obviously you learn stuff each week. So it's a live and it's a growing thing where you can get feedback, your parents get feedback, I get feedback. It helps us personalize your instruction better. Um, so that's why it needs to be worked on every week. And the reason we have a time limit is the diagnostic never ends because you keep learning, so it keeps changing. So that's why it has that time limit. Now, starting next week, this is also gonna be a grade, okay? So this is even an easier way to get a grade than the other ones because this is just continual practice, all right, of making sure you spend that 15 to 20 minutes in the diagnostic area. And once you do so, it will give you extra recommendations. So it'll give you things that you can work on that maybe you had forgotten to help make the current math a little bit easier. So in order to do the diagnostic, you'll click on the button that says step into the arena. And then it'll come up with some questions for you. Now, there's a couple different ways you can view this diagnostic. And you can change your view by clicking on this little carrot right here. It automatically, if you've never done it before, sets to see how these little arrows that are twined to merge the math and language arts practice together. If that's what you want, because maybe you don't want to work on math straight, you want to mix them together, then that means you need to be working on the diagnostic for 30 to 40 minutes because you need 15 to 20 in math, 15 to 20 in ELA. So if you choose to keep yours together, you'll need to make sure that you work on it for the total time so it counts for both classes. But maybe you don't want to do that. I personally wouldn't want to do that. I'd rather have a shorter amount of time and focused on one subject. You can select to just do the math diagnostic or just the language arts diagnostic. So then you spend 15 to 20 minutes working on math on say Mondays, and then whatever day your ELA teacher has recommended for you to do math, you can do the diagnostic on that day. And once you've selected that, if you change your setting, it will save that. So then the next time you get into the diagnostic, it'll look something like this. So you will have a button specifically to step into the math arena. And then down here where it's cut off, a button specifically to do the language arts arena. And then it has an awesome little graphic here where you can see how you're doing in the different categories. You can see your growth. You can see if there's recommended skills. So it is a great area for you guys, your parents, us as teachers to track your progress. All right. So hopefully this answers a lot of your questions. If it doesn't, please feel free to send me an email. Um, I'm more than happy to help you out. Or you can always pop into my office hours, which are Mondays and Thursdays from 4 to 4.30 Eastern Standard Time. And you're welcome to ask me any questions then. All right. Thanks, guys, and good luck getting your work done today. Bye.